these are very important times. I had stopped doing this because I thought it was, I had achieved the goal, which was to emphasize the need to read the King James Bible. Again, I see a lot of media and I listen to a lot of radio. And what is missing, at least from my point of view, from all these individuals who say they work for God, is the Word of God. I know that it is important to read the Word of God regularly. The way you will know God, the way you will be energized, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, and have the strength of Jesus Christ to deal with the temptations of life is by reading the Bible, confronting God. When you're standing in front of God, when we are standing in front of God, we are ashamed of our sin. And that gives us the strength to deal with that temptation. And all of this is real. I was having a conversation. I'm going to get into the reading because the most important thing here is not me, but God. And God is the Bible. But I was having a conversation with a typical person, not very mature, not studied, but things that he can ridicule a person's faith and show how why God is not real. Um, cynicism, skepticism will keep you from God. Not just because of coronavirus, COVID-19, everything we're going to, do we need God? We always need God. We will find God in life. We will find God in Christian music. There's nothing wrong as inspirational messages, but if they're not giving you the Bible, and I believe the Bible is necessary, you're missing out. They're robbing you. Here we go. I'm going to read chapter 1 and 2 because that's where I am in my Bible reading. And here the title is The Promise of the Holy Spirit. Act 1, verse 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theolophus, Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Oh, a little background. This is right after Jesus Christ has left for good. He was murdered on the cross. He was laid to rest. And he was resurrected three days later. And then he came and spent time. Still. Is reported 40 days. This is after he leaves for good. Until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. I'm going to stop right here. How can an event that happened 2,000 years ago still be impacting human life today in 2020 and there's a definite difference in negativity and being positive in being good and decent or being bad in being obedient to God or being disobedient all of that has an impact in our personal personal lives I'm gonna read Acts 3 again to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says he, You have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And here, the ascension means Christ is, is, is going up. When they therefore were come together, 
they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? If you read the Old Testament, that was very important for the children of Israel, the Jews. They had King David, they had King Saul, they had other kings, and they wanted their stability, their security back. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. But you shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost is come unto you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto all most parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you in heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. The titles are, if you have been reading the Bible, if you're aware of things in the Bible, some of these things should automatically come to your mind. Um, Judas betrayed Christ, hung himself, hung on a tree in a hot summer sun until his body fell to the ground and exploded. And the 11 remaining apostles are of the mind to find a replacement. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an outer room, upper room, excuse me, where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Salas, and Judas, the brother of James, not the same Judas. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, I'm reading with two parentheses, the number of names together were about 120. They're just letting us know that. Men and brethren, these scriptures must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us, and had obtained part of the ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of his iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as the field is called in their proper tongue El Seldama, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein. His bishopric let another take. We're going to read it as it looks, not from the old English. Okay. Wherefore, of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John, unto that same day that he was taken up from us. Not one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Must one be ordained, excuse me, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed to Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knows the hearts of all men, Show whether of these two has chosen, show whether of these two thou has chosen, that he may take part of the ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, 
and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Okay, so moving on to chapter 2. Again, the reading is more important. Now, how, how does this fit into our lives? That's why we read the Bible. We read the Bible and we ask ourselves, where can I, where does this speak to the issues in my life? And what I have heard some commentators say is that the apostles are not waiting for God to bring them a replacement for Judas. They're being human and taking it upon themselves. And with God, that is very important. That we let Him guide, we let Him lead, and we follow His guidance instead of doing our own thing. The coming of the Holy Spirit. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sudden came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them. So a, a, a fire in, in the shape of a, of a cloven tongue, I guess is what it said. And I, I gotta say this, it's not a language unknown. They start to speak languages, but it's not languages unknown, French, Spanish, Russian, German. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was also noised abroad, a multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. See, in their own language, not in some language that they needed the Holy Spirit to help them understand. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia and in Pontus and Asia. Again, I'm going to read these words that I think as just as they're written Phrygia. Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya out Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Cretes, Arabians, who do we, who do hear them speak in our tongue the wonderful words of God? And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What mean is this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Remember, God knows you. God knows how to communicate with you. He knows how to get you the message that you need. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwelt at Jerusalem, this is known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third day, hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. So women can teach, they just can't be in charge of a church. And and on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out these days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heavens above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And that's what Jesus Christ returns. And it shall come to pass, again, when Jesus Christ returns again. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you invite Christ into your life, if you're sincere about it, 
if you're fully aware in touch with the reality of God and that he's your loving father and that you love him and you need him in your life and you want to accept his son into your life and you say Jesus Christ accept you as my Lord and Savior you have been sealed by the blood of the Lamb and you are saved forever and you will have everlasting life in heaven we will have everlasting life it's a matter of hell or heaven Amen of Israel hear these words Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as you yourself also know him being delivered by the determinate counsel and the knowledge for knowledge of God you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain see here here's the gospel whom God has raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holden of it and for David speaketh concerning him I foresaw the Lord always before my face for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved let me scroll this up therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope you know these are difficult times having God in our life is not magical power to fix everything that is challenging us having God in our life is having a strong God that can help us weather the storm whatever that storm may be Acts 2 verse 27 because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption thou hast made known to me the ways of life thou shalt make me full of joy with a countenance there is a positive and there is a negative and we can pay attention to what's good in life see that that's I'm gonna stop right here in life we have the option of obsessing on what we think is wrong and we can harm ourselves with our negative thoughts always looking at what we think is wrong or we can put things in perspective this is God's guidance it's not my guidance this is what God desires that we do that we believe in him and we use the power of reasoning to come to some good conclusions about ourselves and our society even in serious difficult times we should be strengthened and comforted knowing that the creator of the universe knows us personally, individually, knows our needs and will provide and will be able to receive those blessings if we stop interfering with what, with what he is trying to do. We can be pleasant, we can be kind, we can be nice, we can be decent, we can be good. We can be respectful, righteous, pure, innocent, uh, meek, and humble. We can take everything that is good in life. Everything that is good in life comes from God. Peace comes from God. Love comes from God. Joy comes from God. Freedom from anxiety comes from God. Freedom from sadness comes from God. Even in the difficult times, He will help us weather the storm. I'll continue the reading, men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loin, according to the flesh, he would rise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this, before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Let's scroll this up and continue reading. This Jesus has got raised up, wherefore we all are witness. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, 
he has shed for this, which you know now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he said himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstools. We're going to have enemies. We should focus on God. We shouldn't care what people think of us. We should care what God thinks of us. And we should value ourselves because by following the way of God, we're not perfect. We're not proudfully boasting. But we know we're good. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made the same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, who we crucified with our sins, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts, and said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Let's go this up again. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they gladly received his word and were baptized baptized well this practice of water baptism i just don't see in the bible talking to people about christ about god about him being the only son of god believing in him inviting jesus christ into our lives is the baptism in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit then they gladly received his word were and they then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking the bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together. And had all things come, and all that believed were filled. And sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat meat with gladness and signalness, signalness of heart, praising God. And having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now, I only read two chapters because I'm aware of the attention span. What is the message in this difficult time? What is still the message of love? It's still the message that our sins have been forgiven and all we have to do is accept the resurrection of Christ, invite Christ into our lives. Is it because I say so? No. I've lived a weird life, a torturous life, a very difficult life, but I can tell you what I have seen. God justifies God. The week that I am doing this video in separate cities across the United States of America, people are being upset because police officers were responsible for the murder of an individual in their custody are burning, are looting. We have people locked up in their homes, not knowing where their next meal is going to be, having to rely on unemployment, if they can even get unemployment. Yesterday, I had to confront the reality that this illness may make me sick, 
and leave me without an income. These are very difficult times. But if you look throughout the human history, there's always been bad. There's always been people like Hitler and other evil tyrants. They're murdering people left and right on planet Earth. Maybe we don't pay attention, but it's happening. It's even happening around us. I don't trust the members of the El Paso Police Department, which is the city I live in, El Paso, Texas, USA. I'm not picking on them, I'm not trashing them. So very difficult times. And what I do, I see a lot of enraged people, a lot of angry people, a lot of drug and alcohol people. I keep speaking on this. This is, this is how people will deal with their depression and their anxiety. And there are people who are lost, empty, really don't have a sense of who they are or why they are. Who we are as a human being with all the functions that God put in us. What's healthy is to enjoy good friends and good family. Good meals, good beverages, um, exercise, good activity, fun and pleasant activity, holy activity, righteous activity, pure activity, innocent activity. That is good for our personal mental health. It's good for us, it's good for our relationship with God. And it's also good for society. Humble, meek people. Understanding that if we have anything, it's because God gives it to us. Not bothering their neighbors makes for a, a society with no conflict. A society of peace. But it also is for the individual's peace. God has given us hope because he's telling us to believe in him. God is saying you can count on me. Even though you think you've been abandoned, I am still there. If you will follow my light, if you will follow my guidance, if you will listen to what I'm telling you, There's still a way. You know, for a long time, I keep saying, God gave us the sun, the earth, the rain. And some people tell me the animals. Yeah, the animals, the rabbits, the pigs, the cows. We don't have to rely on corporations to feed us. We don't have to rely on Walmart or the big corporate farm. If you have a house and you're bored and you're locked up, Order seeds and start growing food. If you want to know where your next meal is coming from, make your next meal. Make grow tomatoes, celery, carrots, lettuce, radishes, corn. And there's always people saying, ah, that can't happen. You don't know if you don't try. God doesn't say we need to rely on Walmart because he has more than provided. I remember a story of 2008, a man in a city, even a downtown area, it may have been Philadelphia, was hunting raccoon so he could cook it and eat it. God is providing peace, comfort. Is that soft, quiet voice, God is that soft, quiet voice telling you, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And it's given us the ability to reason, to think. I'm looking for work right now. I'm in a business that I need to get out of quickly before my vehicle breaks. Luckily, I have some resources. I had never thought of, I'd given up on the whole resume and application. And we use what God gives us. We can find that comfort. He will. He is. Guidance and comfort. It is storm. We just have to have faith.